Flipful Cox here, Whistleblower Media, and this is part three of how I got started as an investigative blogger, which is what I call myself now. I get called a lot of other things by a lot of other people, but I call myself an investigative blogger. Well, in Montana, uh, which is where I'm from, Northwest Montana, Lincoln County, Montana, the wall of corruption is incredible. Turns out, most courts are, are the same. But for me, that's my base of experience, and what I saw happen was um, seriously amazing and um, shocking. <laughs> okay, I can't I know the truth. You know, you've seen that movie Men in Black, right, where they go zap and it's gone. Well, I don't got one of those, so I can't really I know the truth. Whether you believe it's true or not doesn't change the fact that it's the truth, and I can't unknow it. So, basically. Um, I had heard about druggings at a local bar and uh, a date rape drug was used. Now, I was hearing it quite often. Kind of ignored it because the stories weren't getting real personal and I didn't really know what to do about it and, you know, I, my blogs had kind of started because I started internet marketing in 2004 and so I got EurekaMontanaNews.com and several sites for the area. And basically, it was just for internet marketing, right? So there was a local um, resort, a golf resort going in, and I wrote about them, and it was positive. Uh, it was called the um, WildernessClubSubdivision.com. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember all of my sites, but I think, I believe that's still up. And I will be writing more on the Wilderness Club. Uh, originally, see this big resort come in, and they, they stomped all over the rights of, of everybody around them. They basically come in and they violated the covenants. They did what they wanted. They, they built this huge building next to these people's house, right? Okay. They're living their dream, right? They've been there for like 20 years. They got horses and trees and mountains and, and they're just loving their life. And this resort comes in and does this, you know, mass resort, but they don't want their, you know, uh, resort people to have to see, let's call it the butthole of the resort. So they put that in the back, right, next to this subdivision called Kukanusa Estates. Well, they put a big old commercial building up, violated the covenants, right? Uh, judge, LibbyMontanaNews.com, I talk about Judge Michael Peruzzo, very, very corrupt. Um, the things he's done to me, we'll be talking about too, too soon. Uh, MontanaCorruption.com is my site on some of that. Um, I said EurekaMontanaNews.com. Anyway, he issued an order for them to stop construction. They violated it. Nothing happened. So there's generators running 24 hours a day, constant huge dust. There's trucks running by their house, which is, gosh, like 20 feet away from the road. They got huge lights on their house all night. So basically, it started this massive war, right? And the construction workers, everybody was all against the homeowner, right? Because they're trying to stop progress and jobs and their quality of life doesn't matter. Well, if it doesn't matter, the Wilderness Club should have come in and bought them out immediately. The people would have been like, you know, my way of life's going to change. Okay, you know, maybe I'll sell to you if, right, in the beginning. But they didn't do that. They basically just come in and bullied them and terrorized them and ruined their land value and never, ever had any accountability because the Montana Supreme Court is corrupt. I have been told that it's $50,000 for a Montana Supreme Court decision. Now, I've heard it again and again. I do not believe that there is justice at the Montana Supreme Court, and we'll talk about that uh, a lot. I have MontanaGrandJury.com, uh, MontanaCorruption.com, as I've already said, MontanaJudicial.com, MontanaLocal.com, MontanaAccountability.com, MontanaLawEnforcement.com, MontanaMoxie.com. You get the point. And basically, um, these landowners didn't get any justice in Lincoln County Courts. They didn't get any justice at the Supreme Court because the, you know, money talks. And basically the realtor for the resort, he pretty much, you know, is one of the cronies that run the county. So, and the county commissioners, even right now, there's secret meetings and, and changing subdivision laws and all this stuff for money for the commissioners and money for the corruption. Meanwhile, the landowners are still up in arms and have no rights. And the building is still there. So basically, I started writing about that. I spoke out on behalf of these people. I went and took tons of pictures of what was happening. I listened to their story, and their story was 
pretty sick, some of the stuff that happened. Uh, some of the workers broke into their homes, and there was uh, all kinds of crazy stuff that happened. So, basically, I heard that story. I kind of heard the story already ahead of time. But after I heard the story for a while, I, I still wasn't necessarily writing on it. So, I was trying to sell real estate, right? And, and so I talked about the Wilderness Club being in town, and um, I didn't say anything fabulous about them. I said facts, right? But because I was so darn good at getting on top of the search engines, I was on top of the search engines for Eureka Montana Golf, for Wilderness Club Resort, for all these different things. So what did they do? I mean, I'm talking positive, right? Why not look at me and say, oh my gosh, this girl's good. And she's a local real estate broker owner? You know, maybe we can get in on her, our marketing, maybe we can market with her. No, no, let's just hate her, okay? Let's send her a cease and desist. So, if I'm saying I like a McDonald's burger, then McDonald's can send me a cease and desist? Basically, that's kind of what they were going with. They accused me of a violating a trademark for saying positive things about them because I was higher in the search engines than they were, okay? So they had a local attorney, which is their realtor's son, send me a cease and desist. And I said, okay, I'll remove whatever's on my blog that you guys think that, you know, belongs to the Wilderness Club. Oh, he was so excited. Well, it turns out nothing on my blog belonged to them. Hello? So, um, yeah. Anyway, that's kind of how it started. And um, then I'm like, you know, you know, they even brought a helicopter down to my house one day. The Wilderness Club did. Right down on us when we were painting the house. I mean, ah. Uh, yeah, the harassment started with that. So I thought, you know what? If they are going to attack me for being positive, then that is it. So then I started writing about what I was really hearing about them. What they were doing to the landowners, what they were doing lying. They lied. When they did their water test, they lied about which aquifer it was in. They lied about fertilizers and, and they got away with so much stuff. You know, you got Lake Kukanusa right back behind there. They have lied and got through so much corruption because the commissioners love their crony realtor, right? Or how do you say realtor? Realtor. I get slammed all the time for not saying a realtor right, because that's the most important thing in real estate, to say a realtor right. Realtorsucks.com for more on that one. So, I, that's how I started writing on that. And so then when these rapes happened, um, well, that kind of escalated me into a whole new category of, oh my god. So, part four, we'll talk about that. Whistleblower Media, crystal at uh, crystalcox.com, email me your story, and um, let's get you heard. Have a great day.